On today's show, we look into new safety policies being enforced district-wide. And we took to the classroom to introduce some of the new staff on campus. Lastly, we recap all Blue Hawk sports on this edition of Hilltop News. What's up, Rock Nation, and welcome back to the third official season of Hilltop News. Live from Studio 1060, I'm Ashley Salloway. And I'm Bronwyn Liber. We are so excited for this all-new season, and we can't wait to share with y'all what we've been working on. That's right, we have a great show in store for y'all today, but first, Bronwyn is going to catch you up on everything going around the hill. Bronwyn? Thank you, Ashley. Last week, Prosper High School sophomore Haley Alexander suffered from a cheerleading accident that placed her in the ICU. There was a prayer service held Friday, and fundraisers have gathered $25,000 to help support the family. If you would like to help, you can purchase a Haley Strong t-shirt from ILSV Apparel, where all profits will be donated to the Alexander family. Prosper ISD has experienced a bus driver shortage. Students are having to take longer rides both to and from school with the combining of routes. Coaches are having to run CTE shuttles between Prosper High School and Rock Hill, and district administrators have also been having to rotate as bus monitors. Superintendent Dr. Holly Ferguson said that the district has been working on the problem. We had 15 interviews last week and then we had 12 this week. So that's 27 of the 36 drivers we are needing at this time. We have a lot of our central office people from curriculum and different leaders who are pitching in to help out until we can get those drivers in place. With over 200 school shootings last year in America alone, schools across the nation have been putting into place new security laws for the new school year. Prosper ISD is no exception to this. Tosh V. Palasabaladi reports on the new changes we have seen thus far. Close enough. This past summer, Prosper ISD partnered with the town's fire department along with the police station in a three-day active shooter drill to re rein the importance of safety and security. The start to the new school year was no different as you may have noticed some safety changes around the school such as the numbers above the doors located in and around the building. That was driven by the police department so as you go into Rock Hill you see each door is numbered and, and really the reason we do that is because if we have a crisis and we need an immediate response from police or fire we have all the doors numbered and they won't have to pull out a map or pull over to figure out exactly where they are we can just tell them Doors aren't the only thing getting a change with everyday activities such as students eating around the school. The staff has realized the best way to contain and protect the large crowds is to have them in places of supervision. We can't have a school without safety first and just know that that's our number one priority and to ensure your safety and that's what our community want uh, here in Prosper Independent School District. Your parents send you to school every single day to make sure that you're coming to a safe environment. Prosper ISD has prided themselves upon having their own police force. These officers are multi-purposeful as you will find at least two within every school. Hopefully on campuses that you see our officers being interactive, you see them out and about, you see them being visible, you see them uh, checking doors, I mean, you see them in the lunch rooms talking to kids and you see them in, in high traffic areas just being visible and being present. And then also when things do arise, they're obviously there to immediately respond to any crisis that, that may come our way. Many of these new safety regulations may be an adjustment to students and staff, but it is important to remember in order to remain prompt, prepared, productive, and polite, we must first remain safe. For Hilltop News, I'm Tashri Puspalady. If you ever find yourself in an unsafe situation, please remember to call 911 or find an on-campus officer or administrator in order to get help as soon as possible. This past week, Prosper saw a total of 9.19 inches of rain, with some areas in North Texas having their largest rainfall in 24 hours in almost a century. The rain has brought with it flooding, causing over $6 billion in damage. It just kind of compounds the problem because with the drought, you've got hardened, baked-in soils, and you have a lot of vegetation that's died. And so rather than that water just kind of soaking in slowly, a lot of it just runs right off into the creeks, into the rivers, into the streets, and then you get rapid rise of water and floods in people's houses. And Current Prosper water restrictions only allow for watering your yard twice a day on the week until October 31st. For more information, please check prospertexas.gov. School portraits will be taken Tuesday during second period in Gym 1 and 2. 
All students, even seniors, will take a photo for ID cards with the new portrait provider, Katie Studios. Portraits may be pre-ordered at katie.com backlash photo day. Along with the portraits, there are many other things going on around campus this next week. Let's take a quick preview of what's coming up around the hill. You might have noticed an increase of numbers of new teachers at Rock Hill this year. Blake Shalomo and Ricardo Yanez found a fun way to introduce you to some of these new teachers. Welcome to Rookie Rumble. We're your hosts, Blake Shama. Ricardo Yanez. Today we got a special treat for you guys. We gathered eight new teachers and made them compete in the Rookie Rumble. We got three rounds to show you today. Round one, ping pong race. Round two, Oreo face wigglers. And round three, the, the grand, grand finale. finale. Three, two, two one, go! go. Round two. If you want to see who took home the win, head to our social medias at rockhill.media. This past week, football had their first game in the season, while water polo wrapped up their final tournament before district. Connor Fuxa is in studio to highlight both of these teams and everything else Rock Hill Sports. Connor? Thank you, Ashley. This past Friday, football took on Justin Northwest at home. Rock Hill got out to a slow start, going down 17 points in the first quarter. However, our team saw a spark of offense to start the second when quarterback, sophomore quarterback Kevin Sperry found senior receiver Keanu Morrison for a 43-yard pass. After finding Morrison one more time on that drive, Sperry connected with senior tight end Matt Wagner to score our first touchdown of the season. Unfortunately, our Blue Hawks were left scoreless for the rest of the half, going down 23-7 at halftime. Coming out of the half, it didn't get any better for our boys, fumbling on three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back plays, giving Northwest three great opportunities to score that they eventually capitalized on, eventually going up 44-7 at the beginning of the fourth. Our Blue Hawks didn't stop fighting and still managed to find the end zone one more time to end the game 44-14 in favor of Northwest. Football will be back in action Friday at home against Timber Creek. A couple of weeks ago, Rock Hill Cross Country hosted the Rock Hill Twilight Cross Country Inventational. Rock Hill saw senior Gabriel De La O place 10th place overall. Cross Country also had another meet this past Saturday at South Lake Carroll. Overall, our girls took home 6th place as a team. Now moving on to volleyball, they had a very busy week playing a total of 7 games. They started off away at Liberty in non-district play last Tuesday. 
Unfortunately, our Blue Hawks took a tough loss, losing 3-0. However, volleyball rebounded quickly, entering their tournament Thursday red hot. Our Blue Hawks won four straight games, totaling eight sets to zero, heading into the semifinal against Wiley. It was a tough matchup for our girls, and they ended up losing two sets to zero. The tournament did not end there, though, as they faced off against Horn for the third place game. Our girls went all out, sweeping Horn two sets to zero and claiming third place overall in the tournament. Volleyball is back in action tomorrow at home against Richardson. Moving on to water polo, water polo was also in tournament action this past weekend. The girls team went 1-1-2 with a win against John Paul, a tie against Prosper, and losses against Highland Park and Hebron. The girls team saw two standout players with Julie Kirkman scoring 13 goals and Ella Copenhaver having 39 saves. The girls now stand at 7-2-1 on the season. As for the boys team, they went 2-2 on the weekend with wins against John Paul and Rockwall and losses against Prosper and Hebron. Luke Sitz had a standout performance in the, in the goal, saving 45 goals throughout the tournament. After the tournament, I was able to catch up with Coach Peoples to ask him about the tournament. We took our kids to the best tournament in preseason. Uh, we wanted them to be challenged. We wanted them to see what the best teams in the state look like so that when we go to districts, we know exactly what we needed to work on and improve on. Um, we're going to be ready when district play starts this upcoming week because we've played all the best teams in the state. And so now it's time for us to just put all the pieces together to hopefully bring home a district title. This Wednesday when they take on Denton Ryan at home. The girls will play at 6 and the guys will play at 7 p.m. Well, that's all we have for today's show. For Hilltop News, I'm Connor Fuchsa. I'm Bronwyn Leiber. And I'm Ashley Salloway. Keep rocking, Blue Hawks.